Leo. Creo is the devil. Oh, 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 I'm gonna kill this cat. It's a prerequisite for whoever I'm with to get along with Cleo. I would propose to Brooke tomorrow if Jackson fixed Cleo's problem. Stop it. Stop it right now. Living with Marco is like being in a war zone. Marco is just really violent. He bites, he scratches. I'm a little scared, actually. Yuki's sort of a uh, cute and harmless animal, and Marco's claiming more and more ground for himself. I'm afraid that I'm gonna walk in one day and just walk into a bloodbath. In order for our relationship to grow, we desperately need the issues with Marco fixed. I'm Jackson Galaxy. I'm a musician by night and a cat behaviorist by day. I've met cats with all kinds of problems. But I've never met one I couldn't help. In my career, I've worked with thousands of cats one-on-one, -on -one, analyzing their behaviors and retraining them and their guardians. When relationships are at an end... I feel like I have to choose between my best friends. And cat guardians have reached their emotional limit... It's the end of the line. I'm their last hope. I think your fear feeds the dynamic between the two of you. Cats have nine lives, but humans only have one. Whoa! Leo, you give cats a bad name. Brooklyn and Tim are having serious relationship problems because of their cats. I've seen the video footage and it's really pretty intense. Cleo. Ow! Can I smack your cat if no. he hits mine? No, you cannot. <gasps> Stop it! Oh. I have got to help these guys out. I'm Brooklyn. <laughs> and I'm Tim. We've been together for two and a half years. Well, we actually met kind of on like a blind date and we did not like each other at all. <laughs> we always fought and then it was like, it wasn't until like eight months later, I was like, oh, I think I kind of love him. But it took a long time. <laughs> Cleo is my princess. I was going through a really hard time last year and my nieces, they were like, oh, we have a baby kitten. And I was like, well, come over. I want to meet her. And I was just like instantly like fell in love with her and I asked them, you know, can I babysit her? And they said, okay, and I just never returned her. It was like seriously like love at first sight. I know that she can be a brat, but I think she means well. But she's been bad since she was a cat. She was the best kitten in the world. But now Creo is the devil. Tim has two cats, Snarf and Meow Meow, and this cat situation is keeping us from like going further in our relationship because, well, he doesn't want to move in together because he's afraid that Leo is going to teach his cats bad habits. I feel like if our cats all got together, all hell would definitely break loose. Of course, they're, they're going to fight and not get along when they first meet each other. That's just what like brothers and sisters do. That'll be their stepbrother and sister. Yeah, but stepbrothers and stepsisters usually hate each other. Well, it I just saw, takes time. I, I didn't like you when I first I met you. Saw, I, now I, I, we're boyfriend and girlfriend, so like, you know, that should be proof right there. I guess this is kind of like the last resort. I would definitely what? say it's the last resort. Yeah. I would propose to Brooke tomorrow if Jackson fixed Cleo's problem. 100%. I've been doing this for a long time. I got to tell you, very seldom is it just about the cat. It's about the people, too. I always have hope for the cat. When it comes to the people, I'm a little more iffy. I'm Brooklyn. Hey, Brooklyn. Hi. I'm Jackson. Tim. What's up, Tim? How, How are, are you? you? Good, good. I have a problem child. How are you doing? Yes, her name is Cleo. What's the big issue then with Cleo? I think she just doesn't like me, though. I mean, like, if I was to go pick her up, she's going to scratch me or bite me or something. That's not normal behavior for a cat. I spend my life dealing with abnormal cats, so she could be completely abnormal, but we'll work yeah. with that. What I want to make sure of is that I know how dangerous she is, first of all. Also, we need to start getting into the deal with your cats because we're going to be introducing yeah. these guys. They've met when my two were kittens. And Cleo chased Lady Meow Meow under the bush. There's no such thing as a cat play date. You can't just bring cats over into someone else's territory and expect it to all be peaches. Cats are territorial. They need to own the world that they're in. 
And that's not going to happen in the arrangement that we have right now. I feel like he's using Cleo as a reason not to move in together or to get engaged. And, you know, our three-year anniversary is coming up. And if we don't do some sort of progression, I don't want to waste any more time in this relationship. Last time I checked, I'm a cat behaviorist. Wedding planner, not so much. I'm not asking Brooke to get rid of her cat. And I would never ask someone to get rid of an animal. But I had a Boston Terrier named Kobe. She just never liked him from the beginning. No, not true. She's admitted to it. So anyways, I was getting a lot of pressure from her to get rid of him. No, I never so, did that. I never so asked maybe. you to get rid of him. I never once said get rid of him. And so You're out of control no, right now. Do you no, not like him? I didn't like him. OK, I didn't so like him. I don't like him. OK, and I don't like your cat, but I would. Time out, time out. Did you ever ask him to get rid of the dog? No, absolutely not. Never did? No. But she'd be like, hey, it's not right for him to yeah. live here. Hey, it's not right. Like, he used to sleep with me every night, right? So when she would um, Sorry, come over. Sorry, I don't want a dog in the bed with us. Oh, Is but there's so no absurd? problem with having three cats in the bed with us. The point behind this whole story was that there might be a little bit of resentment. You think? It was a real round of fireworks between those two. That dog represents a lot of built up hostility. That was a glitch in their relationship. He doesn't have to do the same to this cat. You know, you talk about how the whole thing with Cleo is kind of an excuse, and the animal thing becomes sort of a relationship thing. It's not necessarily just all about cats. Tim says that Cleo is not an excuse to us not getting engaged or moving in together. And he would never say it's either me or the cat, but I feel like he means it underneath. We need to keep the, the cat issue cat-sized. It's not relationship-sized, it's cat-sized. You know, it's really unfair, the amount of pressure that they're putting on this one cat. Their relationship is literally at a standstill over Cleo. So where is she at? She's in my room. I would like to see all of us together in there, OK? okay. Watch, let's see. This is how you would normally pick her up? Usually, it's usually I pick her up like this. I have picked her up. I don't because. Yeah, see, that's usually what she does. The thing about Tim is that he's very uncomfortable going to touch Cleo at all times. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm going to kill this cat in two seconds. Oh. Blood has been drawn. You approach her with, with fear. Yeah, definitely. Um, but here's the thing about her. She gives you plenty of warning. You know that when she starts giving you that growl, if I were to ignore it right now, and start giving her the pets like this, right? I start getting it. It's kind of cute, I think. Cool. Really? Oh, my god. Uh, OK, yeah, let's leave her alone right now. <laughs> now I have to stop you for a second. Seriously, you do this to her. She used to let me do that, though. For someone who lives with cats, I really don't think she gets them. She just pokes and pushes buttons. Brooklyn blames Tim, and I'm telling you, it's her. See, but like, isn't this plain too sometimes? Like, I know you think she's cute, but energetically, you leave a mess for him to clean up because you're teaching her to attack. I'm going to just show you guys how to push the button, right? You see how she's getting worked up now? Uh -huh. Yeah. Just put my hand here. Right? <laughs> if I do this, she, she's letting me know right now that she's completely overstimulated. In the meantime, Good girl. We can mellow her out, okay. right? Just like that. You see how tail's not moving anymore? When your hand is going all over the place, she responds by getting worked up. So we give her something to mess with that's not your body. Shh. You see how she's actually kind of falling asleep now? Yeah. Head, good. Body, not good, <laughs> you know? I don't think you guys mean to push her buttons. I mean, you do it, I think, through more fear and you do it it's because she's so cute. The thing about cats is that you put out a certain level of energy, the cat takes it in, processes it, puts it right back out to you. They're mirrors. And so when you've got this kind of frenetic energy that this couple represents, all it takes is a little spark and she goes off. So, bottom line, one of these days you better invite me to the wedding and you get to have a brand new space with all these cats living harmoniously. And I really want to be able to help you guys do that. So what we want to do is we want to have your cats comfortable with your cat. And uh, the way we're going to accomplish that is a controlled meet. Usually what I would do is work in the given territory. 
I don't think it's gonna work in this situation. I think it's just too much stimulation. So I'd like to start working with a neutral territory. Cats are territorial, and that's why Brooklyn and Tim's cats have got to meet in a neutral space where nobody has previous ownership. And that way, the cats can all claim the space equally and at the same time. Think of some friends who might be out of town, anybody who has some space they can lend us. Also, I'd like for you to buy Cleo some cat toys. And Tim, you're gonna have to be in charge of playing with Cleo. Because Tim has a lot of resentment towards Cleo, I'm actually gonna have Tim play with her because it's the quickest way to build a bond. So are you in? Definitely okay. do. Worth a try. Now on your part, I just wanna make sure that your investment level in terms of what you have to do with Cleo is there too. Does that mean I'm gonna have to lay off the kisses? Yeah. You are pulling the pin on that cat grenade when you when you love her that way, and someone else is gonna pay the price. If it's not him, it's gonna be his cats. So that wraps us up for this week. All right. <laughs> it was great meeting you guys. All right, nice and if you have any you. questions at all, you know how to find me, right? Okay. Yes, all thank right. you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Tim and I have invested so much time in this relationship that I'm really hoping Jackson can help us because it's definitely a prerequisite for whoever I'm with to get along with Cleo because She's definitely like my child. You want to get rid of your child. You know, I love her so much, so, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, me and Cleo, you know, all the way. <laughs> yeah. Last week, I gave Brooklyn and Tim a lot of homework and a video camera to document their progress. The stakes are huge here. Brooklyn and Tim have let me know either this gets fixed or they're breaking up. So they found a neutral space in a friend's apartment, and now I just want to check in and see how things are going. What I'd really love to do is go over the week's worth of video journaling you guys did. Hey, Cleo. It's okay, honey. Hi. We just bought her some new toys. Ah! Growling while she's licking it. Because you haven't made enough of an effort to play with her. So let's talk about a little bit what I just saw. Brooke, I told you to not be so kissy, kissy, lovey, lovey. And you've taken it back to a point where you're barely touching. So you can bring it back a little bit. I mean, I know you want to. Tim, I would love to see you do a little more play just with the things that have the sticks and the strings to them and less with those mice. Because I think eventually she's gonna just hook her claw into you. You're gonna get pissed off and it's gonna start an eruption. How did you think the play went? Honestly, from the last time we saw you, he only came over twice. We have both been busy. It hasn't been like I didn't want to come over and do it. We came it's, over it's twice. Been like, it's been like three times. I do feel like I should have spent more time. In a way, I was kind of being a little neglectful, I guess. But I think, like, sometimes Brooke just expects the worst out of me, I think, or, like, you know, the worst intentions, I should say. It could be more. Yeah, but it has to be. They need to associate it with routine. I mean, that's the thing is, I mean, you guys aren't gonna get any results. I'm hoping Tim will be better with his homework. I don't wanna have to make that decision between him or her, but this is his last chance if he's still not gonna put any effort into this relationship. I, you know, I'm gonna kinda lose faith in him, so I hope he knows how important this is to, you know, me, Jackson, and Cleo. We gotta have realistic expectations of what's gonna go on today. There's already, like, a charged atmosphere. The reason I wanted to have this space was to get you in a, a place where it's not so, I guess, charged is the right word. Now, what I want to start seeing is the cat's interactions. Everything's been building up to this moment of, you know, all three of the cats, Snarf, Meow Meow, and Cleo getting together. But, you know, Cleo's Brooke's cat, so she's gonna lean to Cleo's side, and I'm obviously gonna get my cats back. So we're on the floor, and I've got Brooklyn and Cleo in one corner. I've got Tim and Lady Meow Meow in another corner. As they're coming together, it's like I could feel that Tim and Brooklyn had been fighting. They're bringing this energy to two cats who aren't wild about each other to begin with. It was obviously a disaster in the making. See, that's good. I know you don't think so. Uh -huh. And I'll explain to you why that's good. First of all, fair fight between her and Snarf. She says, in a cat way, I am taking this floor. This is mine. He goes, cool. 
I'm not in a rush to move, but take it. This one, Meow Meow, she didn't chase her when she did her slink away thing. You take the cat with no self-esteem whatsoever, if she acts like a mouse, she'll be treated like a mouse. She didn't treat her like a mouse. She didn't go after her once. Another good sign, look behind you. Meow Meow is up. She's not behind, she's up on that couch. So she found a vantage point where she could watch her at a safe distance. I know this seems bad, but this is actually a really good thing. Cleo is just sending a very appropriate message to Lady Meow Meow and Snarf that, hey, I'm the top cat, I'm the alpha cat around here. And the great news is the other two cats are respecting that message. Now I want to give Brooklyn and Tim homework to get these cats even closer together. So this gate we're going to put up in between this main room and the bedroom. Basically, what they're going to do is learn one another's body languages, their language in general, from a safe distance. The gate that I'm bringing in is fantastic, I think, because people can walk through it, they close it behind them, and it provides a barrier for the cats. We're going to be introducing the cats on either side of this, and we'll do it with food. Every time they have meals, they can look up, they can see one another, but they're not going to feel like they're being threatened by the other one. We're going to use what I call jackpot food, the best food that these guys can get that every time the cats smell it, they go, oh, I love this stuff. And then every time they smell the food, they smell the other cat. Positive association is formed. A bond is formed. The thing that's going to make this work is for you guys to release ownership of my cat, your cat. It's important that this concept of co-parenting come in. If you were getting married and you were bringing a child in from another marriage, You'd be adopting that child. It's the same thing. But I love his cats like they're my own, so it's his ego, his thing that he needs to get over it. Obviously, I don't have anything against cats, right? You right? don't like my okay. cat. Okay. You That's don't fine. like my cat. Why do cat. I not like your cat? You don't like her because you when I was really depressed, she was the only thing that made me happy. <laughs> I yeah, definitely am jealous that. of her. But That's I'm not jealous of the cat. Bottom line, in order for this to work, you've got to let go of resentments. Animals forgive like that. I need you guys to do the same thing. Way important that you guys commit and do this continuously. We can't have a repeat of last time. Every day, the play into the gate, it's going to have great payoff, I think, but it all depends on you guys. So tell me, are you ready to put the resentments behind you and move forward with this? I'm on board. Brooke? Well, yeah, we'll, we'll see. One of the things I love about cats is their ability to just move on. They don't form resentments. They just live fully in the present moment. As long as Brooklyn and Tim do not implode, I think the cats stand a great chance. I'm not so sure about them. And now it's time for a kitty bit. A cat's sense of smell is how many times stronger than a human's? A, 3, B, 14, or C, 42? Find out after the break. A cat's sense of smell is how many times stronger than a human's? A, 3, B, 14, or C, 42? The answer is B, 14. Cats have twice as many smell-sensitive cells in their noses as humans do. I'm going in for my final visit with Brooklyn and Tim in the neutral location. And the last time I was here, both humans and animals were fighting. The video footage that they sent in to me looks really promising, and it looks like the cats are getting along well. Not fighting, no hissing, no scratching. That's when we know we have a good relationship built. Now, I'm hoping that this time, Brooklyn and Tim are ready to take their relationship to the next level and move in together with all three cats. So how have the cats been? They've been good. They've been getting along a lot better lately. Really? Yeah. How are you guys doing? We're doing a lot better now. He's been a lot nicer to Cleo. Are you playing with her more? Yeah, I've been playing with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, she yeah. proves. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot since Jackson's first visit. I've been actually playing with Cleo a lot, a lot more, right? Mm -hmm. And she seems to be getting along with me. And I've cut down on the smothering, so I think that's helped a lot too with her, with Cleo's agitation. It feels to me like there's a much bigger investment, so I gotta give him some props on that. I mean, <laughs> give, I, give me some. <laughs> I can give you a high five. <laughs> you can give me a high five. I walk in to visit with Brooklyn and Tim, and immediately there's just a striking difference between their energy. There isn't that feeling that some kind of fight is gonna break out at any moment. I, I can't tell you how how much this neutral space 
help things, I yeah. think. Yeah. They're actually all under the bed right now. Cool. Yeah. I want to take a, a little walk around and see these guys if I can. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. Let's see what you got. You guys are under the bed? Yeah. Let's say hi. It seems like they already have an understanding. We have three cats now whose body language is completely relaxed around one another. And that's huge. The cats are getting along so much better, but honestly, I think that my exercise with the gate and the gradual reintroduction was just part of it. Brooklyn and Tim's positive energy took care of the rest. This is a couple who just a few weeks ago were using their own animals as weapons against one another. And today they're bonding over their pets, and that's so important. What you guys have been through personally that I've watched you go through has been amazing. And of course, that energy that you brought to these cats, no matter what happens, they're gonna have an amazing life now. And I'm proud of you guys. Thank you so much for You're everything. Uh, it, it was my pleasure. <laughs> guys, if you need anything, you know how to find me, right? Yes, okay. thank you so much. It was much. a pleasure working oh, with you. Uh, and one more thing, Jackson. Um, there's just one more thing that I wanted to kind of share. Brooke? <laughs> you know how much I love you. You know how much you mean to me. We've been together for three, almost three years. <laughs> you know, I think you're the most beautiful person in the world. You have a good heart. I see how you are with cats, <laughs> how good you are with cats. And I know you'd be a good mom. And I just want us to spend the rest of our life together. Mm. And oh. <laughs> I was wondering, will you marry oh me? Oh my gosh, yes. Right on. Right on. Congratulations. I love you. <laughs> it was amazing watching these two be who I think they were supposed to be all the way along. None of this arguing and fighting. It was beautiful. Congratulations, you guys. <laughs> can I be invited? Because you will. N now that I've cried at the proposal, maybe that can come to the wedding. Uh... Was he crying? He was really crying. You know, like, Jackson's honestly a very like genuine person. Yeah, you can tell he like really, really does care about like not only the cats but us. You guys deserve it. Well, thank you All so right, much take for care, everything. Man. See you later. Bye. Bye. I was totally surprised, and I didn't think that Not you'd even. ever propose to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, she thought I was uh, just using the cat thing as an excuse, and I think we proved her wrong. Okay. I love you. Love you. Don't do it. I served one year in Iraq. Living with Marco is like being in a war zone. Marco is just really violent. Marco will swipe at Inhe as she walks by. I'm afraid to move. I am highly allergic to cats. Getting scratched is much worse. My throat will start closing up. When Inhe brings Yuki, then he gets a lot worse. I'm gonna walk in one day and just walk into a blood bath. All right, son. <laughs>
twice physically her size. Hey! And Yuki's sort of a cute and harmless animal. Yeah, I'm afraid that I'm gonna walk in one day and just walk into a bloodbath. Ooh. If we want to get serious, I mean, this is certainly a roadblock. Right now, in order for our relationship to grow, we kind of really desperately need this um, issues with Marco fixed. I would never, ever consider putting a Marco on the pound. It would be cruel to Marco. I can't imagine anyone really wanting Marco at this point. Hey. How are you, man? Bobby. Bobby, I'm Jackson. My first impression, honestly, was, am I working on hoarders here or my cat from hell? Like, I had no idea. The walls seemed like they were coming in. Imagine what it feels like to be a cat in that house. We've got a, a problem child here, obviously. Yes, Marco. He just doesn't like Inhay. She'll walk by, he'll just take a swipe at her. And Marco doesn't like Yuki. Because Yuki's really possessive. Like, if she's here, then Yuki will, like, growl at Marco. Yuki! Or even, like, oh, okay. fake at him if he gets near. So Yuki's kind of got it coming. <laughs> they both... <laughs> There's no angels here. You're absolutely right. They would chase each other. How big is Marco? He's 14 pounds. Ha, <laughs> yeah. I love it when the cats are bigger <laughs> than the dogs. Bobby and Inhay have seen this Yuki and Marco situation as being a significant roadblock to their future together. I really want to see you guys interact with him. That's really important to me. So uh, if, if you want to take me, that'd be great. OK, bedroom. He's probably hiding in the closet. What would you do at this point if you wanted to bring him out? I would gear up. Gear up? Yeah. What's gear up? Leather glove, and then leather jacket. Oh my god, you got that just sitting there. <laughs> it's Wait. pretty much he can't penetrate it, so it worked for me. Oh, Actually, my old military out. clothes. Wow, I'm going to back up here. Bobby's a veteran of war, but I'm telling you, when he was standing in front of that closet, getting on the leather gloves and jacket, it was like he was putting on his fatigues and getting ready to go into battle. Come here, Marco. OK. It's OK. No, Yuki, no. Yuki, come here. No, see, I just saw the problem. I'm really not surprised that Marco has sort of cordoned himself off in the closet. Oh, he's all kinds of freaked out right now. There really isn't very many places in the house for him to go that he's safe. No. I don't think that Yuki's as innocent as everyone's making her out to be. It's OK, buddy. It's OK. He already get you? Yeah. Wow. Tore open the shirt. That's ridiculous. Bobby goes into the closet geared up, and he comes back out completely tore up. I mean, you're dressed up like a weird superhero to, to go and handle your cat. That, that's, that's pretty extreme. Well, it's about time I get to meet Marco. I'm just about ready. Well, OK, well, why don't I give you this, just in case? Well, I don't think I'll be needing this. I hope. Jackson's going to go inside and try to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with Marco. And I know he's good, but best of luck. All right, son. Marco had cornered himself. Hi. His eyes were huge, and I knew that putting my hand back there was suicide. But it was important for me to find out if Marco was truly the vicious cat they said he was, or if he was just scared, because I need to know him. All right, listen, listen. You have no reason to be yelling at me. Ow. All right. When Marco hit me, I was bleeding. The first thing I thought of was Yuki. She's in a lot of danger. How about this now? You gonna play? Shh. Hi, sweet boy. It's OK. Let's play. Come on, it's just me and you, buddy. Good boy. Good boy, Marco. Shh. When he finally interacted with that toy, he settled into his skin almost instantaneously. It proved that he wasn't a vicious cat. He was a scared cat, a scared cat who had no place left to go. 
Even though I was in that closet forever, there was a second there where he actually looked at me at the same time, and I knew that we were cemented. We obviously have an understanding now, don't we? Um, he got oh, me no. pretty darn good. Mm. When he does strike out, it's pretty ferocious. So let's get into the homework. Number one, start looking into nail caps. They're just acrylic tips. You just pop them on. There's no damage that can happen to Yuki. There's no damage that can happen to you. Also, I think a lot of our treatment plan is going to revolve around training. We're going to start working on reintroducing Yuki and Marco in a more controlled way. I asked Bobby to put up a gate so that Marco and Yuki could be close to each other without physically being able to attack one another. This, of course, is only a temporary solution. The ultimate goal is to get Yuki and Marco living harmoniously together without any gate at all. Here's what else I'd like you guys to do. A lot of this has to go. We gotta declutter strategically. I mean, you're a military man. You know there's too many places of ambush. <laughs> Finally, when I was playing with him, I noticed we would have little breakthroughs, and those breakthroughs surrounded toys. For this, he went bananas. This was the initial thing that got him kind of like that. The more you play with him, that kind of scary look that he gets in his face, it'll be gone because it won't be directed at you or Yuki. It'll be directed at this. All right, I will be back. And if you need me, you know how to find me. Jackson gave us a lot of good ideas and starting points, but definitely once we implement what he says, I doubt Marco will be the perfect citizen all of a sudden. <laughs> Last time I was here, Bobby had to get geared up just to pick Marco up. And I think this is a couple that's trying to integrate into one house together. And I really do see this problem with Marco and Yuki being a real impediment to their relationship. Good to see you. Hello. Hi, and hey. Looks better. <laughs> We've cleaned up and decluttered uh, as much as we can. Inhei is the one who did most of his stuff. I helped him along with the progress. <laughs> she led the charge, I'll led say. Charge. You know what was really amazing was walking in to talk to Bobby and Inhei, and there was just a different feel in the room. They were talking more. They were joking more. It was a different couple than the last time I was here. I think you'll see the most change here. Completely decluttered it. That's amazing. In the amount of time that I gave you, not expecting this level of completion. Great work. You guys did a lot of video journaling, and I really want to go over what I saw. Marco is loving his new toy. You doing OK, baby? I had Bobby and Inhei take Marco to the vet and get nail caps put on, and it has worked wonderful. The dividends being paid are beyond what I actually thought were going to happen. I'm happy to play with him now. He pats on me, and I see it as a cute little thing instead of, like, danger to my life. Yeah, yeah. Cute. Do you want a new feather bird? That shift in two weeks' time? Yep, he does. Is amazing. It's been a huge change, that's yeah. for sure. Amazing. Uh, amazing. amazing. Marco. Yuki, sit. Yuki. No. Yuki. Yuki. <laughs> Tell me about the moment on the video. You guys were sitting right here. Yuki, sit. Yuki. Pretty common moment. They suddenly realize that they're right next to each other, and then it's a stare off, and then someone flinches. That moment is something that signifies a bigger issue between the two of them. I'm sure a lot of people are going to look at this and say, oh, this 14-pound cat is putting a whipping on a four-pound dog. I don't see it that way at all. I think it starts with Yuki. Now, look, what I really want to do is I want to check in with the boy. I want to see Marco. From what I saw in the video, Inhei had really established a connection with Marco. And I think the homework I gave her last time gave her confidence. It's your favorite toy, baby. <laughs> Pretty measurable difference from the cat that I saw last time. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> The bond that I'm beginning to see between Inhei and Marco is more than I could have possibly expected. I love that when he just came out, he went to you. I loved that. I mean, the progress is pretty amazing, and I'm really happy with how it's going. Things are going OK in Bobby and Inhei's house. 
except there's one big piece missing. Marco and Yuki have got to learn how to sit and stay. That's actually a big piece of our progress. Now, I want you to be able to walk from the hallway to this wall and for her to stay there. What, what, what? For her, that's asking a lot for me to actually move across the room. So it'll be a challenge. I want Marco to just be trained to do a sit. How do you train the cat? Uh, yeah, huh. If you thought the first one was a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I want Yuki on one side of the gate. I want Marco on the other side of the gate. I want them to both be able to sit and stay while being around one another. It's asking a lot. I know that. What I like to do is purely positive reward systems. We do that with clickers. It's also a pointer. It's actually just positive reinforcement. You do something good, we click, and we give you a treat. All we're going to do is associate this sound with great things happening. It's click and treat. It's been a proven method from all animals. So I'm going to introduce the concept of training with Yuki. All right, Yuki, come. Sit. Good girl. This is not just homework. This is not just teaching parlor tricks. This is about the life and death of their pets. Yuki, sit. Very good. Click. It's so important because if she's in the pounce position, mm -hmm. as soon as she sees him, she's going to pounce. Mm -hmm. So she's got to understand those stakes in order to succeed with her dog. So I think we, we got a great start, especially with this one. <laughs> Here's your homework. We want to get these guys sitting and staying on either side of that gate. The second thing is play. Really get him going, exhaust him, and do it every day. You game? Absolutely. You motivated? Please be motivated. Are you motivated? I am motivated. Good, man. When we first started, I just wanted Marco to be, you know, manageable. I'm going to leave you guys. Now we're getting into, like, the, the dreams, the small <laughs> spots. All right, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. I've got high hopes. That being said, I was asking them to click or train both Yuki the dog and Marco the cat simultaneously. This is not something I've tried before, but hey, it's worth a shot. Last time, Bobby and Inhei had done some work. They had cleaned up that house. Marco had a full new set of nail caps. <laughs> this time around, I wanted these animals clicker trained, hey, from a good safe distance on either side of the gate, sitting, staying. So, how have things been going? We've both been training the animals. Marco, sit. Yuki, stay. Yep. Yuki, of course, highly food motivated. Yep. Marco, surprisingly motivated. As you can see, he will follow the green ball. Brilliant. Very cool. Marco's doing better than Yuki. <laughs> <laughs> I asked Inhei to demonstrate her clicker training technique for me. Yuki, come here. I wanted to see how she could do with Yuki while Marco was in the room. Stay. Yuki. Come on, Marco. Stop Stay. it. Stay. Yuki, sit. Uh, uh, OK. Right on. Inhei immediately says, mm, Yuki, sit. It was that first moment that I saw her training work paying off beautifully. Stay. Great work. By the way, he's still out. Nice going, Marco. So in the midst of all this training work that we were doing with Yuki, I look, and in the bedroom door is Marco. Amazing, right? Good boy. Speaking of amazing, where is Yuki's attention right now? At me. Firmly on you. I want you to put her in a, in a sit. Yuki, sit. Yuki, stay. Marco. Stay from Marco. Good boy, Marco. OK, Marco, up, Marco. Marco. Oh, my god, sit. Marco, Marco, sit. Marco, sit. Got it. Brilliant. <laughs> You're such a good boy, Marco. The difference in the cat that I met the first day that I was here is so stark. It's OK. He was a feral cat. This is a different cat. I'm 
absolutely shocked myself. Just being in the open with you in the house, I mean, it's just, it's totally different. It must be kind of nice, though, for you to be off the hook for 100% of his wellness. It was a strain knowing that he didn't get along with anyone. That's, that's a weight. It is. This is great. Work for it. Beyond expectations. I just wanted them to stay away from each other or just give each other space. But actually having one person instructing them both at the same time, it was a huge payoff. This makes me so psyched because I spent many, many years working at animal shelters. The animals that came in were like Marco, and those are the cats that get euthanized because they didn't have a base of socialization. When I saw Marco in the doorway, I saw the faces of every cat that I've worked with in shelters who died, who didn't go to a home because they were scared. So for a second there, he was a symbol of a cat who wasn't going to have to die someday in a shelter because his guardian was gone. To see him for me is huge because I know that he'll be okay. <laughs> I know. Oh, God. He really went above and beyond, you know? And so did you two, so brilliant work. By the way, <laughs> seriously, it was beautiful work. In seeing that kind of reaction from him, it actually helped me realize how far we've come also. Thank you so much. You're I welcome. Like, I honestly did not think I could get to a point where Marco were. I could interact with him. And I'm finding out I'm actually maybe a cat person, too, and a dog person. You're totally cat. <laughs> All right, guys. I have a mental snapshot of a moment today that I'll just take away with me and walk forever with. And I had this picture of a family. I am honestly really thankful for Jackson. He's helped us so much and changed our life. I'm thankful that we had this opportunity to work with him.